we're Matt and Josh, two crazy Kiwis. And we've decided to travel the length of our beautiful country, New Zealand, on rollerblades. When I'm old and grey, I want to have a few stories to tell my grandkids. And one of those stories has to be that we rollerbladed this country. There's just one problem. We're terrible at rollerblading. <laughs> it's definitely not going to be easy. It's the last time I ever buy rollerblades off a 12 year old. That's why we need all the help we can get along the way. What made you pick us up? I thought one of you was a girl. Strap up, because it's going to be one hell of a ride. Previously on Blade NZ. <laughs> Does he do this quite a bit? <laughs> As we continued our journey down the rest of the North Island, we strapped on the blades and went for a hunt in the bush. Got it. Sorry, Mr. Goat. Took on the Great Tongariro Crossing. <laughs> and made our way to the halfway point of Blade NZ. The South Island's going to be crazy! <laughs> this time. <laughs> you know it. We get a taste of the southern lifestyle as we try our hand at fishing in the Marlborough Sounds. Is this a keeper? <laughs> we try out some controversial transport in Nelson. So how much do you owe in parking fines? Uh, more than 110,000 and check out the beautiful wildlife that New Zealand has to offer. There's a lot of dolphins here. Crazy. We're kicking off the South Island leg by making our way around the top of the coast before shooting down south to Kaikoura. Block, which is one of the gateways to the Marlborough Sounds. You can't actually get down the sound by car. Which makes it pretty much impossible to get by blade. Luckily we've been picked up by a couple of southern blokes who are taking us deep into the Marlborough Sounds. We're going to hang out and experience life in these parts. Yeah, these guys seem pretty sweet, but they seem to be drinking a lot. Do you guys always drink on the boat? Yep. Shane and Murray work on a mussel harvester and are also keen fishermen. And living here makes it easy for them to catch a feed. Alright, find some water. They're taking us for a fish now, so hopefully we'll get to experience some southern delicacies tonight. So good fishing here by the mussel farms? Yeah, it's always pretty good. You just come out after work and put your line down, catch some dinner. You can't really complain, can you? I mean, one of these for dinner, it's always good. So he's got to be between 30 and 35, so he's perfect. He's a nice little 34. Just caught my first blue cod in the Marlborough Sounds. Mazah! The fishing's going well, but I'm not having as much luck as I was hoping for. Any luck here, Josh? Looks like you're not the best fisherman, eh, buddy? I've never said that I was the best fisherman, ever. Mm. So there's no point bringing that up. Plus, Shane gave you the best rod. Oh, yeah. I'm hooked up. Oh, this is a big one. This is a big one. Is this a keeper? 
<laughs> Maybe you should hang out the fishing rod and just stick to rollerblading. But actually, you're not the best blader either, are you? The lifestyle in the sounds is pretty good. Always something to do. Uh, it's probably slightly different to what most people do with their lives. It's fairly secluded. It's basically a bit of a wonderland. You can do whatever you want to do, really. Amazing being in a place like this, eating fresh seafood, caught today. Mm, I actually found the mussels to be a little bit chewy. Yeah, they were a bit chewy, weren't they? It was kind of like eating a rubbery like condom or something. Did you find? Cheers, Cheers guys. It's yeah, lovely evening. Thanks, thanks. I don't think Shane and Murray get many visitors down here in the Marlborough Sounds, so they seem to be quite excited and there's a few rum and cokes going down. Yeah, it's rum and coke Wednesday, apparently. You got some talent, boy. <laughs> After what we've been through on this trip, it's quite nice to be able to relax, to be honest. Let the mullet down. This morning, it'd be fair to say that we're both a little bit hungover. Luckily, Shane and Murray have a traditional hangover cure. Plenty of speed, mate. <laughs> it's not the most traditional way of getting rid of a hangover, but it did the job. You're up now, buddy. <laughs> you guys having a go now? No. <laughs> We've never done that before. You guys are bloody idiots for trying that. <laughs> the Marlborough Sounds has been awesome, but it's time to move on to our next location. The boys are kindly dropping us back at Havelock. It's all blades and hitching from here. We're heading 72 kilometres west. Bleeding Nelson, y'all. We're meant to be heading south for Bluff, but the boys from the Sounds told us we have to check out Nelson. There's a man named Hone who has a horse in town. Apparently, he's a bit of an infamous character. Kia ora tātou, ko Hone Māheki taku ingoa. My name is Hone Māheki. I got Barney straight off the racetrack uh, over in Blenheim. Uh, he was heading for the uh, Happy Cat factory. But he was too good a too good a nature for that. If we had a banana, he'd love a banana too. It's about Barney understanding what I want, and and about me understanding Barney's wants and needs. You guys ever had any romantic interaction? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I actually I actually cut that out. For a few bucks, Honey will take you for a ride around Nelson. Do you reckon we can go for a bit of a swim? Yeah. Like it. You find it hard to parallel park? Yeah. Whoa. Me too. Does your horse understand today? Or? Aye, that he does. Look. Tetru the Karaka. He's a Māori horse. Look at the colour. <laughs> Thank you. 
what you guys did today, coming in and having a ride, it's brilliant. What we need in today's society is life. Sitting on the back of the car, I notice a lot of people glaring at us. Seems to be quite a controversial thing. It turns out that the people of Nelson are mad at Hone because he sometimes forgets to pay for parking. So how much do you owe in parking fines? Uh, I've got it on my book uh, for uh, more than 110,000. Goodness me. <laughs> so that's a few laps on the horse, isn't it? It certainly is. I'll lift it back. Oh, there, there goes much. It's called freedom. Something that a lot of us don't actually have. I'm quite happy with the way that I'm living in today's society here in New Zealand. Aotearoa. God's own. Even though you owe $100,000? Well, like I say, that's only on paper. It's only, you know. Coming up, we check out the terrain at the Abel Tasman National Park. Oh. Then head to Kaikoura to check out some of the local wildlife. Pretty they grew up with such actual bastards that sting like shit. Two days ago, we touched down on the South Island and began the second half of our journey rollerblading down the country. You guys always drink on the boat? Yep. We were picked up by a couple of friendly locals who shared an insight into life in the remote Marlborough Sound. You guys having a go now? No. We've never done that before. You guys are bloody idiots for trying that. <laughs> then finally, we made our way to Nelson, where we had an interesting tour of the city. Whoa. Good old Does your horse understand today or? Aye, right, that he does. He's a Māori horse. Look at the colour. <laughs> we managed to score a ride part of the way this morning. We're heading for the nearest town centre, 20 odd kilometres over the Takaka Hill. Takaka Hill? It's uh, quite treacherous for driving, but rollerblading seems to be okay. Pretty treacherous to roll about I reckon. But yeah, it is a bit actually. We've heard the Golden Bay area is home to quite a few alternative folk. We'd love to meet some hippies and see what the lifestyle is all about. We've arrived in Takaka, lovely spot, seems pretty relaxed and looking forward to spending the next couple of days in Golden Bay and the surrounding areas. It turns out meeting alternative people is a lot easier than you think when you're two grown men on rollerblades. My name's Greg from the US. I've been here in New Zealand for a year. Living on a community up the road. Greg's kindly invited us to stay the night and I'm pretty keen to check out just what his little community is all about. Right. We promote a more harmonious uh, existence uh, with our broader environment. Yeah, we try to eat as much as we can out of the organic gardens. We have teepee nights pretty nightly in the summer where we do talking circles. It's just uh, an alternative to going to the pub and uh, getting pissed. It's okay to have a few herbal shandies in the teepee though. Some bloody Takika homebrew. Cheers Alex. Oh, well that tastes... Delicious. <laughs> yeah. I've got no idea on the map where we are, but it's pretty special here. It's cool to see everyone working and living together as a community. Amazing lookout, amazing view. Great home brew to drink. What more could you ask? Bit of electricity, wouldn't be too bad. On a little roller blade, we're going to explore the Abel Tasman National Park. It's a stunning morning and I'm looking forward to a solid day's rollerblading. I have no idea how long the track is, but I'm assuming we can get it done and dusted in probably about an hour. 
Only problem is we can't actually find out where it starts. Excuse me. Does the track start down there? You know how long it'll take? Four, four days and um, three nights. Oh. <laughs> is it um is it smooth terrain? It looks like Josh has been ill-informed once again and it's going to take a lot longer than one hour to rollerblade the Abel Tasman track. Let's do this, Josh! There's quite a lot of hills along the way. Yeah, at least the sun's shining. The day is beautiful, but the track's a bit of a bastard. I've lost another wheel, which isn't ideal. I'm having the time of my life today, and I'm not finding the terrain as difficult as Matt. Josh is absolutely ripping and tearing today on the Abel Tasman. I've never seen him blade this well. Yeah, I don't know. I just feel like I have so much more confidence now. You're a new man, Rich. Yeah. along the track and I just hear this deadly thud and Josh has hit the dirt once again. What happened, eh? What happened? Stop, please. Sorry, buddy, you gave it your best shot. But we all know who's the best blader. It's me. Abel Tasman has been absolutely incredible, but we got to get a roll on. Thanks to our new friend, Anna's 44 ton lorry. We've made it a massive 180 kilometers southeast and we're now just a short blade away from our next destination. This town is said to boast some of New Zealand's most beautiful wildlife, so excitement is a bloody understatement. Made it to lovely Kaikoura. Not many places where you can be this close to the mountains, still be at the sea. There probably is actually. Yeah, I think it's taken. If your lady's a leisure and you're looking for Neither of us have been to Kaikoura before, so we're excited to find out more about this area. We pretty much know nothing at this point other than what we've heard about the wildlife. So we're after some locals to help us out. You like Kaikoura? Yeah. Why do you like it? Because it's got much more things to do. Play on the beach, go fishing, not much trickles around, go play high and go see. Do you like rollerblading? Yeah. Are you good? Uh, not really. You'll be better than my friend Josh. Really? Does he keep falling over? Yeah, he falls over all the time. Oh. Yeah, all right, settle down. So far, Kaikoura has been epic, and I'm looking forward to tomorrow to see what else is on offer. Apparently people travel here from all around the world just to see the Kaikoura wildlife. We're pretty excited because there's a seal colony around the corner. What people don't tell you is that seals smell absolutely revolting. Those seals really smell. So far, seals have been just a drag, an absolute drag. Seals are interesting animals to watch. They're like fat, hairy sausages that can move around by themselves. <laughs>
there's a seal pup colony just around the corner and thankfully I've heard the young seals are actually quite adorable. Kakor is amazing, but sadly our time here is coming to an end. Before we leave, we've got one last thing to tick off the bucket list. Seals were pretty crazy and we're keen to see some more sea creatures if possible, hopefully some dolphins. I was expecting maybe a couple of dolphins, but this is mayhem. There's a lot of dolphins here. It's crazy. They tell us that to, to keep them near you and keep them entertained, you, you should make a lot of noise. I mean, I can't speak dolphin, obviously, but just trying to... See what you're doing. Yeah. There's a lot of dolphins, eh? Fuck around. There's so many more than I thought. That was incredible. How many wees did you do it to me, too? Maybe three. These dolphins have completely stolen the show. This is one crazy wildlife extravaganza. I don't know how Kaikoura could get any better. It was pretty crazy seeing orcas because orcas actually eat dolphins. It was a tiny part of you kind of hoping that would happen. Yeah. Same. It would also be cool to see a pack of dolphins eating like a seal or something as well. <laughs>